Hallelujah. God is good. He has, he has always been good in every area in our life, whatever season, He is always good. And He is never late. He's always on time. Today, we would like to talk about the cost of discipleship. We would like to understand that all discipleship or training is to be so that we would become like Jesus. All disciples are believers in Christ. But unfortunately, not all believers are disciples of the Lord. So we would like to understand the cost. What is, uh, what is our commitment to become His disciples? Okay, let us pray. Father, we pray for Your Holy Spirit to touch areas in our life that need revival. We pray, Father, that there will be a renewing of our mind and transform us, O God, to truly be your disciples who would go to the ends of the world for your name's sake. As we pray, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, the cost of discipleship. We will read from the book of Matthew, chapter 24, verses 20, uh, Matthew 16, rather verses 24 and 25. It says, Then Jesus said to his disciples, Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves, meaning that we are to put God first, and take up their cross. That would show, show also that we are to pursue our purpose in this life. And follow me, follow the Lord. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it. But whoever loses their life for me will find it. This is the word of God. There is a book written by D. Collins and it says, If you thought that living the Christian life is easy, then you haven't lived it. Actually, Christian life is not just a bed of roses. It has many sacrifices and entail. If you look at the life of the men and women in Scripture, in the Bible, they they went through many suffering they underwent many uh, persecutions they had many sacrifices but they were the men and women men and women of god who gave so much glory and honor back to god you know when you have a view of becoming christian we would not like to have that illusion you know there are many people who, uh, who are under the illusion that the Christian life is not very different from their current lifestyle. There was one lady who said, If I become a Christian, it just means I'll have to start going to church every week. Question, is this really the only difference between the lifestyle of a sinner and of a Christian? Just going to church every week? There should be an awakening. There are some who have been Christians for many, many years. And but have never been taught the kind of commitment that Jesus asks of those who want to follow him. Yes, they come to church. They are part of the activities in church. But they don't have the commitment that the Lord wants them to have. Let me tell you a story. There's a story about 24 Christians, men and women, who were shown how their lifestyle were not in conformity with the teachings of Jesus. And you know what? 18 of them stopped coming back to church. And 10 fell out of, fell from the faith. They backslid. And one of the men said, I'm sorry, but I thought being a Christian was about attending church and loving one another. I did not realize it meant making personal sacrifices. You see, Many think that a Christian life is just an easy thing. That it's just about enjoying the blessings of the Lord. But have not even considered the responsibility and the personal sacrifices that come with being a Christian. It is essential that we all have a clear understanding of what Jesus demands of us if we wish to be one of his disciples. To be a leader. To be a believer is so easy, 
but to be one of disciples would entail many sacrifices. There's a story about two brothers. Okay? They had a strong desire to join the army, the military. So, they decided to go to the recruitment center to enlist. But you know what? Only one of them actually enlisted in the army. The other changed his mind when he discovered that he had to cut his hair short, he had to rise every 4 o'clock in the morning for training, and etc., etc. And this, this brother who changed his mind, he preferred the comforts of a civilian life. He was not ready to make a commitment to a life of the military. So having considered the demands of being a soldier, they each made their choice. Now, it is because of these demands that put their strong desire to the test. It separated the men from the boys. So as we consider the cost of discipleship, <coughs> excuse me, our own desire to be a disciple of Jesus will be put to the test. And we will have to make a choice. We either serve God or we serve the devil. The first step. Jesus demands that our love for Him would surpass that of our love for all others. If we don't have a love for the Lord that would surpass the others, we will not make it as a disciple. Matthew chapter 10, verse 37. He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Can you just imagine? We will not be worthy to be his disciple if we do not love him more than the others. You know, it's so easy to say and even think that we love Jesus more than all the others. But the question is, do we really love Jesus more than the others? Matthew 10, 34-36 Do not suppose that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to turn a man against his father, a daughter against his mother, a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. A man's enemies will be the members of his own household. Wow. In many cases, becoming a Christian can result in an ongoing conflict with the unbelieving relatives, the unbelieving friends, and even the unbelieving people in the office. There may be occasions when we are tempted to compromise our faith. Example, you have an unbelieving spouse, and your unbelieving spouse says, Hey, it's a beautiful Sunday morning. Why don't we go out to the beach and have a picnic? It won't hurt if you miss just one service, right? Now, before you make a decision, consider this passage of Scripture in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25. Not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. Wow. Can you just imagine that? Not to give up meeting together. We cannot just have a reason. Anyway, the Lord will in, will understand. Anyway, it's family day. Anyway, we're banding as a family. But you know, we have to keep the Lord's day holy. So we have even to encourage one another. Wow. The following example also would demonstrate not only an unwillingness to forsake the assembly, but also the willingness to die for Jesus if necessary. Now, there's a story about a Christian woman who attended worship at the local church every Sunday without fail. Very faithful. However, she had an unbelieving husband who didn't like it. And he often asked his wife to stay at home and sometimes even threatened her. One Sunday morning, as a lady, as that woman was about to attend a church service, he prepared the breakfast, he did the household she did the household chores, 
She took a bath, got her, her clothes ready, and to prepare for, to go to the worship service. But the husband said, You're not going anywhere. You're staying at home today. When she insisted that she was going, the husband pulled out a gun, held it to her head, and said, Where are you going now? The wife replied, If you pull the trigger, I'm going to heaven. If you don't, I'm going to church. Wow, what a commitment. Truly a disciple of the Lord. The woman was willing to die if necessary. And this is the kind of faithfulness that Jesus demands. Luke 14, 26. If any man come to me and hate not his father and mother and wife and children and brethren and sisters, yea, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. Can you imagine? Being a disciple is very important in our Christian life. It's not just about being a believer. So our love for Jesus is demonstrated in our obedience to his teaching. Matthew 7 verse 21 <clears throat> Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Can you just imagine? Doing the will, it would mean being a disciple. Because being a believer can only limit us to just believing and not the doing. So how can a believer who is not a disciple enter the kingdom of heaven? John 14, 15 If you love me, keep my commands. Hebrews 5, 9 And once made perfect, he, that's Jesus, became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. Question Are you ready to commit yourself to obedience to Jesus? even if it means giving up your life. Jesus demands obedience to his commands as proof of our love. The first command to the sinner is to repent. Acts chapter 2, verse 38, Peter replied, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Wow. The baptism of the Holy Spirit comes when there is nothing that would hinder the Holy Spirit from coming. And that would be sin and, and also a newness that is within because of the turning around from the life of the worldliness and carnality. The word repent is from the Greek word metanoia. Okay? It means to change one's mind or purpose. Well, if you are of the world and you want to be a disciple of Jesus, you have to change one's mind. You have to find your purpose in the Lord and walk in that purpose according to God's will. You know, merely saying, I repent is not sufficient. We must bear the fruit of repentance. The following scriptures show us that repentance was a fundamental requirement of the gospel. Mark chapter 2 verse 17. When Jesus heard if when Jesus heard it, he said unto them, They that are whole have no need of the physician, but they that are sick, I came not to call on the righteous, but the sinners to repentance. Luke 24 verse uh, 20, 46 to 47. He told them, This is what is written. The Messiah will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and repentance for the forgiveness of sins will be preached in, the, in His name to all the nations, beginning at Jerusalem. And Luke chapter 3, verse 8. Produce fruit in keeping up with repentance. And do not begin to say to yourself, We have Abraham as our father. For I tell you that out of those stones, 
God can raise up children for Abraham. Acts 26 verse 20, first to those in Damascus, then to those in Jerusalem, and in all, in all Judea and to the Gentiles, I preach that they should repent and turn to God and to demonstrate their repentance by their deeds. Wow, actions speak louder than words. The question is, what are the fruits of our repentance? John said, produce fruit in keeping up with repentance. So they asked, what shall we do? Here, in this passage, we read of John's answer. Anyone who has two shirts should share with the one who has none. Wow. And anyone who has food should do the same. Even tax collectors came to be baptized. Teacher, they asked, what should we do? Don't collect any more than you are required to, he told them. Then one of the soldiers asked him, what should we do? He replied, don't extort money and don't accuse people falsely. Be content with your pay. Wow, can you imagine? That is a complete turnaround from worldliness, carnality, and materialism to the things that the to the things of the Holy Spirit. Actually, repentance involves turning from sin okay, to a lifestyle that conforms to the teachings of Jesus. Romans 6, 12 and 13. Therefore, do not sin, do not let sin reign in your mortal body that you obey its evil desires. No, do not offer any part of yourself to sin as an instrument of wickedness, but rather offer yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life and every part of yourself to Him as an instrument of righteousness. Can you just imagine a complete turn around, a new lifestyle? There is therefore no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus walk not after the flesh but after the spirit according to romans chapter chapter 8 verse 1 and in galatians 5 24 and they that are christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts wow can you imagine first peter chapter 4 verse 1 to 3 <clears throat> therefore since Christ suffered in his body, arm yourselves also with the same attitude, because whoever suffers in the body is done with sin. As a result, they do not live the rest of their earthly lives for evil human desires, but rather for the will of God. For you have spent enough time in the past doing what pagans chose to do living in debauchery, lust, drunkenness, orgies, carousing, and detestable idolatry. Wow. You know what? We should be pre we should be prepared to repent, to turn around, change our mind, to abandon sinful practices, to live a lifestyle that is in conformity with the teachings of Jesus. Are we willing to do that? The second command of Jesus is to be baptized. Math, Mark chapter 16, verse 16. There is a message that says, This was the message that was preached to thousands of Jews at Jerusalem. Acts chapter 2, verse 36 or 38. It says, Therefore, let all Israel be assured of this. God has made Jesus, this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Messiah. When the people heard this, they cried, they cut to their hearts and said to Peter and the other apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? Peter replied, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins. 
and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. The word baptize is a transliteration of the Greek word baptizo. It means an immersion in water. Not just a sprinkling of water, but immersion, submersion in water. In the New Testament, those who heard and believed the gospel were immediately baptized for the remission of sin. Today, however, many people seem reluctant to be baptized. You know what? This actually demonstrates an unwillingness to commit themselves to Jesus. And we have to live a continuing life of, a, of faithfulness. So, having repented and been baptized for the remission of sin, we must continue to live faithful lives in obedience to Jesus. Now, Christians are exhorted to walk in a newness of life. Romans 6, 4, Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism unto death that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. Wow, something new, something more powerful that will transpire in our life. So we are to walk in the Spirit. Galatians 5.25 If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Meaning, allow the Holy Spirit to lead us. Focus on the things of the Holy Spirit. Walking in the Spirit is essential to prevent us from falling. Wow, Galatians 5.16 Then I say to you, walk in the Spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Wow. The best way okay, to turn from our flesh, to turn from ourselves and focus on the Lord is to walk in the Spirit so that every lust of the flesh will not affect us. We will be covered by the power of the Holy Spirit. We are also to walk worthily of our calling. Ephesians chapter 1, chapter 4, verse 1. As a prisoner for the Lord, then I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. All of us have a calling. We all have a calling. We have received it when we receive the Lord. First Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 12. That ye walk worthy of God, who has called you unto his kingdom and glory. We need to live our lives worthy of God. So to walk worthily and faithfully even unto death, so that you may live a life worthy of the Lord and please Him in every way, bearing fruit in every good work, growing in the knowledge of God. Revelations 2.10 Do not be afraid of what you are about to suffer. Wow! I tell you, the devil will put some of you in prison to test you. What? To test you. And you will suffer persecution for 10 days. Be careful, even to the point of death, and I will give you life as your victor's crown. Wow, a victor's crown. Those who do not continue to live faithfully should not deceive themselves that they are in fellowship with God. Unfaithfulness cannot equal to fellowship with God. 1 John 1, verse 6 to 7. If we say that we have fellowship with Him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not, do not have the truth. But if we walk in the light as He is the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, cleanses us from all sin. Can you imagine that? 1 John 2, 6. Whoever claims to live in him must live as Jesus did. 2 John 1, 6 And this is love, that we walk in obedience to his commands. As you have heard from the beginning, his command is that you walk in love. 
Well, let's see. Our lives may be divided into three main categories. First would be the area of religious, area of the family, and the area of the civil or society. Remaining faithful in our lives is important. The Christian has many numerous religious responsibilities that must be fulfilled. Some of these are done in the church. Others are in our daily lives. So as a Christian, a Christian will not forsake the assemblies of the saints. Hebrews 10.25 not, for not forsake the assembly together. There are numerous responsibilities that we have toward God and toward each other. First, we worship. The Lord desires that we come together. What? To come together. What for? To participate in the Lord's Supper. To sing, to pray, to give our finances for the work of the church, and to edify and build up one another. Also to mutually care for each other. This is another reason we come, we come together, that we might bear one another's burden and provide for each other's need. Okay, we need to do that. Look at the life of your brother and sister. What are they going through? What are their problems? What are their troubles? And how can we come in and help them? There are other responsibilities that we must fulfill in our day-to-day -day lives. Every day, we are to worship. We have a responsibility to worship God on an individual basis. Don't wait for the Sunday service. Don't wait for the prayer meetings. You can pray to God every day. Pray without ceasing. You can sing new songs to the Lord. And you can study the Word of God. You can meditate on the Word of God. Next thing is you remember the poor. We have a responsibility to help those in need. Okay? Whereby needy saints or neighbors, whether they are really needy saints, a brother sister in the church or they are neighbors who are having financial material trouble bible says if we give to the poor we are lending to god well are we ready to commit ourselves to living faithful christian lives we want to conclude as we close this message we need to realize that Jesus demands a full commitment. He cannot accept partial commitment. He cannot, cannot accept commitment once in a while. But we have to commit to being a disciple through and through all the days of our life. We are called to love and obey Him above all others. Okay? And it would mean that we are to love Him, we are to obey Him, even if it would mean losing our lives. Wow. You see, if we are present in the body, we are here with the Lord. To live is Christ. But when we are absent from our body, to live is gain, to die is gain, we are present with the Lord. So, whatever that means, whatever we are, what circumstances we are in, pursue discipleship. Be ready to pay the cost, the commitment to become a disciple. Discern and even choose to be one of His disciples. Thank you for listening. God bless you. Shall we pray? Father, to you we just acknowledge that there is a call in our life. And you said that the callings and the giftings are beyond repentance. Whether we have failed somewhere along the line, you will not recall our calling. You'll continue to wait and wait and be patient until we respond to that call. And we have a call. We have also the giftings that come with that call in order to be able to do to have the capacity to fulfill that call in our life. So Lord, we ask that you will give us a discerning spirit 
a humble, meek, and a yielding spirit, O God, that we may pursue to be your disciple in the Lord Jesus Christ and nothing else. Thank you, Father, as we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you and have a powerful week ahead. God is good.